People move around all the time, to the next neighborhood, to the next city, to the next state, or to the next country. Why is America the number one country in the world for immigrants to come and live in? Immigrants have faced the cruelty of nativist Americans for decades and yet believe that the hardships of achieving the American dream doesn't compare to the state of living in their home countries. I moved here because, well, for my dad, he, I don't remember why, but I guess he thought that he had more opportunities here than back in Pakistan, which is true, you know, the American dream and stuff, so. I remember my parents told us that we were going to move because they wanted a better life for themselves and me. The reason why I moved here, um, my family wanted to give me more educational opportunities because Universities in the United States are more renowned throughout the world. I moved here, so I learned better English, you know, get better education, and have more have a broader view on life, I guess, than back there. Right now, we have like an oppressive government, so like it was a really bad, like it was a really bad living situation, living style, so my parents decided to go to America and my dad was already a US citizen so he came here and took my citizenship test and I became a citizen when I was like six. And the religion was much much more ubiquitous, the United States being much more diverse. It's a different cultural setting. So when I first came here my reaction to the culture here was kind of surprising at first because Everything was really like liberal, I guess. Like, you know, you could go to a store like Walmart and that everything there, and you know, it's everything's really big, especially if we're in Texas. But yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was really cool. Where I used to go to school, there was like not a lot of people like me, like you know, from Pakistan. It was mostly like Caucasians. And like maybe maybe like some Hispanic people and like African American people, and they all had their little cliques. And I really didn't have anybody, so I would kind of jump around. And I really have I didn't really have many friends because everybody wanted to be friends with people like who were like that. So I felt like an outcast then. And I mean nowadays like I don't really feel like an outcast because I found my group of friends that I want to be with and. They're not all like Pakistani, like most of them, we're all really mixed. The kids that I went to school with never really treated me differently. I was treated like I was from the country. I mean, no one really knew that I was a foreigner, so it was pretty nice to be treated the way others were being treated. Well, I moved around a lot, and at times I would feel like an outcast, but after staying in school for, I'd say, a month or so, I would begin to feel in place. Sure, I was treated differently just because I was in initially from the United States, but it's not something that was specifically just for me because the United States being so diverse, there are tons of other people too that move from other countries to here, and it wasn't like really bad treatment. I was accepted pretty quickly because it's such a common phenomenon. I know I was never an outcast, uh, well besides the typical elementary school kid outcast. But because of my culture, I was never an outcast. I was always very proud of my culture. My family integrated pretty well. My dad uh, already knew English because he was an English professor, professor at Venezuela. Um, my mom learned it. She became a citizen, like, I'm going to say six years after we moved. Um, my sister, she came here at nine. We all integrated very well. Uh, when I first came here, was I treated differently? Um, Sort of, because I didn't know how to speak English, even though I studied English for like five years. So I had to like relearn everything, but after getting used to like culture and everything, it was, it was fine. My parents raised me in a very traditional Filipino way. Every day I would come home from school, there would always be a Filipino meal ready on the table. And they have tried very hard to continue or they have tried very hard to uh, force me to um, continue speaking the language and up until today I still f speak 
both languages fluently. Tagalog and Visaya. I was raised very traditionally. Like even now, I love my culture. Like I love dancing and all that stuff. I love the clothes, um, the food. But I think I'm pretty whitewashed now. Okay, so one of the religious holidays is um, Eid, which is like um, after the end of the month of Ramadan where you fast. And so Eid, um, everybody comes over and literally we spend like the, from like how long like in the morning? Like, I don't know, like early hours of the morning to like maybe 5 o'clock a.m. the next day we're together. I do feel like I'm more or less a part of American society because there's, it's just so different that anyone can really come and feel like a part of the culture. I, I would say I'm a part of American society as of right now because you know, I can speak English better than I used to and yeah, I've met a lot of friends so like it feels like I'm part of it. My family's completely part of American society now. We contribute well. We're we're Americans now, pretty much. And I'm pretty mixed with a lot of ethnicities and um, cultures, but then because of because of my Spanish, because of my Hispanic heritage, I consider myself Venezuelan completely. America is really diverse and everything, and everybody's like accepting of everybody nowadays, whereas it wasn't really like that before. So yeah, but like in some situations, you know, people are still a bit racist and stuff like that does happen and I've been through a couple of situations like that too but for the most part I would say I'm part of America's society. Well I've lived here for nine years and I, I would say I belong in the in the society. I mean I don't feel any different from the person right next to me. Say something sweet in your language. Takumara. <laughs> It means sweet. Kaifahalak <laughs> habibi, <laughs> which means, which is a greeting in Arabic that you use towards a, um, it means how are you, sweetheart, which is what you use towards, um, and it's not just for intimate relationships, it's also for like father son and familiar, familial relationships. Estoy contenta porque mi, porque mi familia se mudó a los Estados Unidos y me hizo la vida mejor. I'm very glad my family moved to the United States because it made my life a lot better. It's probably like, me <laughs> Something like that. I'm very happy in America because I met a lot of different people and my friends. लेकिन मैं अमेरिका में हूँ और मैं बहुत खुश हूँ फिर भी मेरा दिल पाकिस्तान में है Oh my god, she better not be my Go away sugar bear. Mahal kita. Just kidding. Yeah. Oh. Confidence. Hello. All right then. <laughs>